He had skill and technical ability that were just out of the ordinary. He would produce one or two pieces of skill that would just make everybody kind of go... I think all lovers of football, and not just Real Madrid fans, enjoyed that goal. Unfortunately, that incident will remain as the last thing everyone saw Zinedine Zidane do on a football pitch. Zinedine Zidane was born and brought up here in the underprivileged Marseille suburb of La Castellane, which is home to mostly first and second generation immigrants. He's the son of Algerian parents of Kabyle origin who emigrated to France in the 1950s. Hence his middle name, Yazid, by which his close friends and family still call him today. At school during break times, it was football. Nothing else was in his head but football. He played so much. When he finished school and went home, he'd throw his satchel down in the house and go out to this square and play football. All the time with his friends. All the time. That's all he did. Play with the ball. Although he left here to join AS Cannes as a teenager, he's never forgotten his roots. Today he funds the local football team, La Nouvelle Vague, and is the club's honorary president. Without Zidane, these youngsters wouldn't have a team to play for. He helps us financially and gives us a lot of support. He buys all sorts, balls, shirts, etc. And he's helped by his brother Farid. And with him, He's responsible for everything at the club. He joined the French side AS Cannes after being spotted by their scout, the late Jean Barreau, the man who Zidane regards as the biggest influence on his career. He made his first team debut aged just 17, and those who played with him at the time remember his exceptional raw talent. At 18, he wasn't the great Zidane, no. He was already gifted technically, but he wasn't strong physically. But technically, he was superb. He had sublime skill, a superb touch and all the moves. On a technical level, he was much more advanced than the rest of the team. The French city of Bordeaux is better known for its fine wines than its football team. And that was his next destination in his rise to the top. There, Zizou didn't fully mature into the superstar he eventually became, but his quality in a better side shone through. Although he failed to help the club win any silverware during his career there, he was voted Ligue 1's best player in 96. As technical coach, Piero Labat played a major part in Zidane's development at Bordeaux. Zizou is the biggest success of Labat's long coaching career, which includes Zidane's former Bordeaux teammates Christophe Dugarry and Vigente Lizarazu, who also formed part of France's World Cup winning team in 1998. Labat recalls his first impressions of Zidane back in 1993. Because he was a player who appeared introvert, in fact he doubted himself, I attempted to instill confidence into him. It was one of the first times, the first time in fact, that I applied psychology in order to provide him with the self-belief that allowed him to produce his full potential. Zidane was outstanding during his time at Bordeaux. It became inevitable that he'd move on to bigger things. I was really, really convinced that he was going to get where he did. It wasn't possible for me to think any other way. He had everything, technique, mental strength, he was level-headed, 
and possess the ability to question things in order to improve. In 1996, he joined the Italian giants Juventus. Serie A was considered the world's best league back then, and the Frenchman took time to adapt to its rigours. When he went to Juve, it wasn't easy for him. It was a difficult first six months. The owner, Agnelli, didn't have a great deal of belief in him, and neither did his teammates. And he played a withdrawn role in the team, as a defensive midfielder. Once he was played in a more attacking role, Zidane developed into a truly world-class player. He inspired the old lady to consecutive Serie A titles in 1997 and 98. He proved the judgment of France's greatest player before him, a former Juventus legend himself, to be spot on. Michel Platini, Michel Platini gave an interview to the Italian press in November 96 and said, you're going to eat your words. Zidane is a playmaker. Take another look, believe in him and watch him change. And he did change at Juve, when everyone eventually put faith in him. Immediately after that second Scudetto, Zidane represented his country at the World Cup for the first time. France was the host nation, and the last time they held a major tournament, they won it. Platini inspiring them to the title at the 1984 European Championship. Les Bleus began impressively, winning all three of their opening group games. But in the second of those, Zidane displayed the first signs of his suspect temperament when he was sent off for stamping on Saudi Arabia's Fouad Amin. He was handed a two-match ban. A huge blow to his country's hopes. The French team was an impregnable fortress. They relied on the individual talents of Zidane and Djorkaev to score the goals. At that time, only one goal was necessary for France to win, because they never conceded any. He had skill and technical ability that were just out of the ordinary. When it came to control, and especially leading the team, he managed to see and analyse situations quicker than anyone else on the field. Thanks to that, and the fact that he was surrounded by a team that was very strong, he made the difference. In their semi-final, France faced surprise package Croatia, competing in their first World Cup finals. The Croats took the lead before an unlikely hero emerged for Les Bleus. Defender Lillian Turam scored twice to take France to the final, just as well since Zidane hadn't been at his best. His only big game, his standout match, was the final. But that's what separates a good player from a very good player. It's like dreaming about the perfect holiday and actually going there. It was the first time France had reached the final of a World Cup. They faced record four-time champions and favourites Brazil in Paris's Stade de France. Once or twice in your career, you need that meeting of talent with delivery and uh, that makes then the recognition yes this guy is exceptional Q Zinedine Zidane that is then the marriage of art with mental strengths and uh, Zidane delivered on 98 in the final. Another rare Zidane header made it 2-0 just before half-time. <laughs> Proof that practice does make perfect. He had the touch of a genius. But he always told me, I'm not good with my head. I used to tell him, stop annoying me with your insecurities. I made him work on his heading. France eventually won 3-0. He gave a meaning to the way France played. Take the team, despite all the goals in 1998, it was mainly defensive. Zidane 
give it balance. Without him, it was a tin that lacked panache, lacked a positive image. The nation celebrated like never before. For us, the French, it was something extraordinary. Nobody had ever seen anything like it since liberation after the Second World War. Nobody had ever seen so many people in the street like that. What's more, we'd never seen the people virtually as one together. Two years later at the European Championship, hosted jointly by Belgium and Holland, Zidane spearheaded France's attempt to become only the second country after West Germany to hold the World Cup and European Championships simultaneously. This free kick helped France defeat neighbours Spain 2-1 in the quarter-finals. It was as if in 98 France had reached the top of the mountain and then they stayed there until 2000 and Zidane made all that happen. It was as though the French team still had a few metres left to climb to the top but Zidane climbed those few metres for them and his teammates followed. France needed their mountaineering expertise again when Nuno Gomez gave Portugal the lead in their semi-final. But the World Cup holders fought back. Thierry Henry equalised early in the second half. No further goals meant extra time and France were awarded a penalty in the dying minutes. Zidane scored what was a golden goal. France were on the brink of conquering Europe for the first time since 1984. He was the leader, the leader just like Platini was in the 80s. Zidane was the leader of his generation. He was inspirational because he became the best player in the world. He was irreplaceable. Rotterdam's De Kuyp Stadium hosted the final against Italy. When France won this tournament 16 years earlier, Michel Platini was their inspiration. Zidane had become his modern-day counterpart. But things weren't going to plan for Zizou and France when Italy took a second-half lead. Then, deep in injury time, Sylvain Wiltord scored a dramatic equaliser. That took the game into extra time. Towards the end of the first period, Robert Pires broke down the left. David Trezeguet may have been the hero, scoring a golden goal winner to give France the title, but Zidane's Player of the Tournament award was fully deserved.